Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and today I went on a shopping spree. <laughs> uh, all these boxes that you see up here, they're actually different computer parts uh, that I bought because I'm going to be building uh, a new video editing machine for myself. So all these boxes you see up here are just the different you know, computer components that are going to make up the, the actual computer. Uh, and uh, the object or the, my goal of this little project that I'm doing uh, was to try to build a, a video editing machine that can edit 4K video, maybe even 4K RAW. Uh, I'm gonna see once I've actually put it all together if we can handle that, but do it all within $2,000. Now, all these parts I got on Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna provide all the links in the description of this video or better yet, just go to my website, tomantosfilms.com uh, and I'm gonna provide all the information there. Also, you know, extra little details about how you, you know, things to watch out for and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, these are all the components, like I said, that will cost you around $2,000. Now, I actually ended up spending a little bit over $2,000, and that's because uh, some of the parts uh, were not available at the moment that I wanted to buy them on Amazon. And because I needed to get this done uh, in a relatively quick amount of time, I couldn't wait till they restocked uh, on Amazon. So I ended up buying it on, on a few other websites, which were a little bit more expensive. But you can definitely get all these parts that I'm going to show you guys, uh, you know, for $2,000. I'm going to provide all the links, like I said, on my website. Uh, but you just have to kind of still keep your eye out and see because the prices, especially on Amazon, do fluctuate. So just wait and actually buy it, you know, when it's the cheapest. Uh, you know, now if you're in a hurry like me, then you're going to have to pay a little bit extra. But like I said, within $2,000, you should be able to build this whole machine that I'm, I'm building. For me, it, it actually cost me 2,250 something dollars. Um, now, another thing to watch out for is the operating system. You know, whether you wanna use Windows 7 or 10, like I'll be using, uh, that is gonna cost you a little bit of extra money. Now, I already happen to have Windows from my previous machine that I built, so I'm just gonna reinstall them, uh, the, the, the same Windows onto this one. But uh, if you guys want a fresh new copy of Windows 10, uh, and that's gonna cost you another $100. So uh, let me just kind of go through all the parts so you guys can see what, uh, what actually makes up a, a computer these days. Uh, so first thing we have is, is the motherboard, it's the main thing that basically everything attaches to. And I went with the Asus motherboard, which is the X99A USB 3.1. Uh, then the next thing here is the graphics card. And this one's also from Asus and, and it's the GTX 1070 uh, uh, graphics card, uh, NVIDIA, uh, which has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 uh, memory. Uh, it's also G-Sync ready. It's compatible with PCI Express 3.0 and it's the Founders Edition. Uh, next, we have the cooling system, uh, which is from Corsair. And this is the H110i GTX, uh, the extreme performance 280 millimeter liquid uh, CPU cooler. Uh, so cooling system is very important because it's gonna, like I said, they're gonna take away all of the, the heat uh, that builds up within the CPU. And without a good uh, cooling system, your CPU is just gonna overheat. It's gonna slow down you know, the basic the way the CPU actually works. And because of that, it's gonna slow down your whole machine. So you definitely wanna have a good cooling system. And this is a, a you know, it's not the top of the line one, but it's uh, it's pretty much you know it's it's up there. It's a it's a liquid cooling system, so it, it should do a, a pretty good job. I also have uh, two uh, hard drives, which are uh, solid state drives from uh, ScanDisk. And these are the ScanDisk Ultra 2, uh, which are up to 550 megabytes per second uh, read and 500 megabytes per second write speeds. I also have memory here from Crucial. And this is a 32 gigabyte kit, which consists of four eight gigabyte uh, memory bars. This is DDR4, uh, 21300 uh, speed. The reason why I end up getting, uh, you know, four of eight, you know, gigabyte uh, bars to make up the 32 gigs of memory is because this motherboard only accepts up to eight gigabyte, uh, basically, bars. Uh, so that's the reason why I got it. Now you can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes uh, on this motherboard. Now this is the most important thing. This is the CPU. I end up going with the Core i7 uh, 6800K LGA 2011. Uh, socket. I've used uh, the Core i7s, now this is the latest generation, but I've used the older versions of, of the processor uh, on some of my other previous computers as well as my, my laptops. Uh, and I've always trusted them because they're, they're pretty good when it comes to rendering. Uh, they'll really sp speed up the, the whole workflow. Now to power this whole you know, computer, you're gonna need a good power supply. So I end up going with the EVGA 1000 watt power supply. 
Now, this is a little bit overkill um, and you definitely don't have to go all the way, you know, with a 1000 watts. If you want to save yourself some money, uh, definitely, you know, you can go uh, to kind of power everything that I have uh, up here. You can safely go with a 750 watt uh, power supply. Now, the reason why I end up going with a bigger, more powerful power supply is because uh, I just want to be basically future ready. So in case I ever want to update and, for example, maybe get another graphics card and connect the two together, to get extra you know graphics performance uh, then i'm going to need an, uh, more power basically for the for the whole machine so this will kind of cover me for that and finally to kind of put it all, all this together you need a case uh, otherwise your computer would just be sitting on a table uh, so i went with the phantom 630 um, you know computer case it's a pretty big box up here there's only half of it uh, but if yeah it should be i guess i've never actually used this case before uh, or even that company but I, I'm kind of curious to see just you know, how good and, and modular this uh, case is going to be and whether it's going to create any problems uh, when I'm trying to squeeze in a lot of these parts, like for example, the, the you know, uh, water-cooled uh, uh, CPU cooling system. I also end up getting a pack of uh, hard drive cables that can connect the hard drives to the motherboard. So anyways, now all that's left to do is to actually uh, put all the different parts together.
right, so I finished building uh, my new computer, kind of excited. It's, it's actually a lot bigger than I expected it, just because the case is bigger, but it's, it's actually in a way it's better. I mean, it's not good maybe for if I wanted to transport it somewhere, but then again, it's just going to be sitting in my office. Um, and the more space you have, the better it is because it kind of keeps the, the internal components uh, a little bit cooler. You know, the airflow is basically uh, less restricted. Uh, but anyway, so once you've connected everything, obviously like double or even triple check it. Make sure that you didn't miss some, for example, important wire like, like let's say to the CPU, you know, cooling system, the fan or something. Because then, you know, you turn it on and then pff, would fry your CPU. Um, so you got to be careful with all those things, double check everything. But I already did all that checking uh, and I think, I think it should be ready. So now the moment of truth, just got to turn it on. So. Uh, let me connect the power and uh, the video cable to this. Alright, I got the power on there and I'm click the, the button. I got the monitor up here. You guys can't see it, but I can see it. So you should be able to see the, the BIOS start up. And if that works, then you can start loading in Windows. So, Good news, it's, I can see all the fans moving and the GPU light and, uh, and, uh, and all the other like, lights for the, the LEDs turning on, so that's good. But I don't see anything on the screen here. Seems like it's powered up. Hmm. All right, something doesn't work here. <laughs> and I have to check that out. Oh, I'm getting some kind of a message here on the motherboard. It says uh, there's like a little LED light. It says number 53 on here. Um, so uh, let's try to figure that out. See what's what's actually wrong with it. Uh, all right. So <laughs> uh, after checking the the manual for the motherboard <coughs> and also checking the um, uh, what do you call it, uh, in, in with, on the website with the manufacturer and calling ASUS <coughs> about this uh, 53, the uh, little warning uh, message uh, code that it displays on the motherboard. Uh, and that's by the way, you know, if, uh, most motherboards will have that, most modern mo motherboards, they're, they're going to have a little, like, um, like a little LED display. So you basically will look it up and see what it's, whether it's flashing anything or uh, you know, if, if it's important, but usually if it's off or if it just says zero, zero means everything's okay. Uh, but if there's something, like I said, on the motherboard flashing, that means that the motherboard is detecting some kind of a problem. And that's probably the reason why it doesn't want to start up. So, so here in the manual, it, it says code 53, it's memory error, invalid memory type or incompatible memory speed. Uh oh, that's not good news. Um, but yeah, it looks like that's what it is. And I actually, I mean, uh, the memory that I got for this is the right chipset. It's the right, I mean, it says it's the right speed and everything. So I guess it's just compatibility because it's, um, like I said, they, you know, even here where they have a list of uh, memories, it's, I mean, like I said, it's the same speed as, as like many of the, the ones that they recommend. Now, one thing I noticed though is that uh, my my memory is from Crucial, and they only have for that speed, they only have two models of Crucial memory that's actually being supported. Uh, and so when I check this, my memory is in, it's almost I mean when I look at the model name, it all looks the same except one little one letter at the end is different. So that basically tells me that um, looks like I bought the wrong memory. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to see if I can return it now. I don't know if I can, uh, but one thing I, I will have to do is order new memory. So that's yeah, that's the reason why I want to kind of do this video to show you guys because uh, you know unless you're like a, somebody who regularly builds computers, uh, you probably won't run into these kind of problems. But me, you know, I'm I'm more concerned with actually editing videos. So I, 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 the last time I've actually put together my own machine was uh, it's gonna be like four, four and a half five years ago. So it's been a while. Uh, didn't have any good kind of problems back in you know when I when I did that last machine I was working on, but uh, I remember I had one problem with one little thing that I forgot to connect, and that's the reason why it wasn't starting up. But 
here, like I can say, I'm checked all the wires, everything's okay, and I can see the motherboard start up and display that uh, error. And I've tried taking out the memory, because sometimes it's, you know, if it shows you memory error, it could just simply be maybe the memory, uh, you know, uh, bar isn't properly inserted or things like that. But I've taken it out, put it back in, all that stuff. It's it just doesn't make a difference. So. Uh, after also contact, having contacted ASUS, they pretty much told me that my best bet is to get one of the memory, uh, basically the, the memories that they have all listed in the manual. So that kind of sucks. So that's the reason, like I said, that I wanted to do this video. So you guys can kind of see for yourself that sometimes something small like that, even though you get what's technically the right memory, you know, chipset and speed and all that stuff, it can still turn out that it doesn't work. So. Uh, for now, my little computer building project is going to have to be on hold. For you guys, it's going to be quick, but I have to wait basically two days because uh, tomorrow is Sunday and there's no delivery in my area tomorrow. So, uh, and I'm ordering all of this on Amazon. So, uh, I'm going to order a new memory uh, and hopefully we'll get here um, on Monday. Uh, and then once I get it, then I'll come back to this and I'll uh, hopefully have a working computer for you guys. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, yeah, like you can see, that's kind of how it looks. So, uh, anyway, stay tuned. See you guys in two days, or you know, in your case, see you in five uh, five seconds. <laughs>So now the last step uh, before you can actually you know, install your applications and start editing on this new computer is to actually get Windows working under. So this is the screen that you're going to be welcomed with when you start up for the first time and you don't have Windows. It's just a BIOS screen. And if you have this, that means you've hooked up everything correctly. It means the motherboard's working, you can see the CPU uh, fan, uh, basically operation, you can see all the things and now we just need to install the actual uh, windows uh, so you know you can buy windows uh, you can buy it on amazon uh, they'll send you a usb or a, or a dvd drive or if you don't want to spend any money you can actually install windows for free in a totally legal way uh, which is something i didn't even know myself basically you'll go to the official page where you download windows uh, and they have the the media creation tool you download that tool, install it, and from there uh, we'll ask you what version of, uh, uh, of Windows you want. So I would select the 64-bit version, uh, and uh, you can select the, the Home or Pro Edition. And with that, you can create a bootable USB drive. Uh, now you can create a DVD too, but since we don't have a DVD drive in this computer, uh, you know, it's kind of pointless. But if you wanted to add a, a DVD drive, then you could use that too. Uh, but with a USB, it's easier. Just you know, put put the Windows on there, put the USB drive, uh, and then as your computer starts up, uh, when you see the Asus uh, motherboard logo, just press F8 uh, on your keyboard. Uh, then you can even press multiple times just to make sure. Uh, and then the the boot uh, options will basically pop up on the screen. Uh, so you select the USB drive where you have uh, the Windows installation uh, disk. From there, you'll see Windows actually installation start up. Uh, and then, you know, it's going to ask you for all the information. When you go to the uh, screen where I ask you for the, for the serial, just simply press, you know, skip or, you know, just basically that you don't have the serial number. And it will install the full Windows still for you. Now, as far as I know, uh, and maybe if you guys, you know, mo know more, you can correct me and leave it in the comments section below. But as far as I know and I've seen, uh, there is absolutely no difference with the activated and non-activated version of Windows. Uh, I've been using actually on another computer the non-activated version of Windows uh, 10 for a few months actually. Uh, I think it's going to be maybe three months. Uh, and literally the only difference I've seen uh, is that ever so on you'll get a message popped up or, or on the bottom of the screen will say that this version of Windows uh, is not activated. But as far as functionality goes, there's no difference so you could i think indefinitely just keep on using it that way now if you want you can always activate it within windows like once you have it all installed and basically just pay the you know hundred dollars or two hundred dollars you have the, the pro edition uh, later on so it's really up to you but like i said uh, you don't need to um, as far as i know you don't need to really activate it uh, you can just keep on using it like that so that's how you can save yourself a uh, hundred dollars uh, anyways as you guys can see Building a computer, uh, in theory, should be easy, but it's not always easy, simply because 
sometimes you just run into little problems where you don't know what's what's wrong so that's part of the reason why i wanted to do this video so you can show it to you guys uh and so if there's any problems you guys can kind of go through through it uh, with me so like i said in the end um i had to change the memory and i had to get a you know a replacement for the motherboard uh, but i got the computer working and uh if so far i'm really happy with this machine so i've just you know installed uh, premiere on it had a chance to sort of, sort of play around with it and uh, from my initial tests uh, it handles 4k beautifully uh, and even in davinci resolve uh, because of the really good graphics card which uses gpu um, it also handles uh, color grading but it handles raw footage in there really nicely uh, way faster than anything i've, I've, I've had uh, up until this point so So if you guys want information on uh, all the parts that I got uh, and where you can get them for the best prices, uh, then as always, check in the description of this video or go to my website at tomantusfilms.com. Anyways, thank you guys and uh, good luck with building your own video editing machine. Uh, I'll see you next time.